And as we step now into that message portion of our service, I want to remind us of where we've been. Last week, we talked about Jesus having this conversation with Nicodemus about being born again, being born of water and the Spirit. And then Jesus goes out and he does all of this baptizing with his disciples. And then he has a conversation with a Samaritan woman at the well. This is like the second part of his two-part sermon series on baptism. So let's hear how that conversation goes in our video for this morning. Jesus had been teaching in Judea. He and his disciples began traveling back to Galilee. They traveled through Samaria and stopped in a town with a well. Jesus' disciples went into town to buy food. When Jesus was at the well, a Samaritan woman came to get water from the well. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The woman was surprised. Why are you talking to me? She asked. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Jesus said, I asked you for a drink. You don't know who I am. If you did, you would have asked me for a drink, and I would give you living water. The woman was confused. She said, Sir, this well is deep, and you don't have a bucket. Where do you get this living water? Jesus said, Anyone who drinks this well water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water I give will never be thirsty again. In fact, the water I give will become a well inside you, and you will have eternal life. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, but the woman did not understand. Mm -hmm. Sir, she said, give me this water. If I'm not thirsty, I won't have to keep coming to this well to get water. Go get your husband, Jesus said. I don't have a husband. The woman replied. Jesus knew she was telling the truth. He said, You don't have a husband now, but you've had five husbands. <gasps> Jesus was right. I see you are a prophet, the woman said. Maybe this prophet could explain something to her. She said, The Samaritans worship here on a mountain, but the Jews say we need to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus said, Soon you will not need to be in either of those places to worship God in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus said, I am the Messiah. <gasps> the woman left and told the people in her town, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Many Samaritans believed in Jesus because of what the woman said. Jesus stayed in their town for two days. Many more believed because of what Jesus said. They told the woman, We no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this is really the Savior of the world. Jesus offers something better than physical water. He gives us himself. Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to everyone who comes to him by faith. We can worship him as Lord and Savior wherever we are. So this Bible story kind of centers around thirst. The, the woman comes to the well, right, because she's thirsty. That's why she brings her jar of water so that she can have water to drink, water to do the chores. But she comes to the well in the middle of the day. Which shows us that maybe, maybe she actually thirsts for something even more than water. Maybe, maybe she thirsts for only being in a community where people love and accept her instead of coming out in the early morning with the rest of the women who know her background, who know her broken past and gossip about it behind her back. She's coming to the well with a thirst. And we come to the waters of baptism with a thirst, right? We, we come wanting something, right? Dylan and Christian came to the waters of baptism because they heard about the good news, the stuff that gets delivered there, the forgiveness of sins, the eternal life. And I think we come and gather here with a thirst. 
But if we really think back on our lives, I wonder what the thirst is that drives us into action. What is the thirst that drives us out the door in the morning? And I think that there are a lot of things that we could point to. You know, maybe it's food and water, right? We want to eat and drink. We want our families to do the same. Maybe it's a pretty basic necessity of wanting a roof over our heads. We want, we want a house to live in as long as we've got three bedrooms or maybe four bedrooms or maybe five or, or six. And, and the thirst for earthly things is a thirst that we work for. It's a thirst that we continue to have. It's a thirst that we continue to work at and no matter how hard we work at it, the thirst remains. And this can be true of other things in our world, like the toys we try to pursue or the new cell phone and our neighbor gets a new one a couple months later and then I need a new one again. The thirst of the well, the thirst that brings this woman to the well is a thirst that continues. And Jesus points that out to her. Right? As Jesus meets her at the well, just like Jesus meets us at the waters of baptism, he points out how consistent our thirst is. And he has this kind of peculiar conversation, right? Jesus' first word is, give me a drink, which is something we might not have expected from Jesus. It's something we wouldn't have expected from God, that God would have any kind of thirst is beyond our comprehension. It's beyond our understanding. But Jesus asks this woman for a drink. And she's taken aback by it. Well, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, this is kind of weird. But Jesus clarifies, it's not about this, it's about me. If you would have asked me for a drink, I would have given you living water. And Jesus explains that this living water wells up inside of you so that you aren't thirsty anymore. And of course the woman says, well, yeah, I want that. I don't want to have to live this life of, of trying to cover up my sin, of trying to hide my sin away, of trying to, trying to find people that will accept me, and one after another after another after I've been rejected so many times. I don't want to live this life anymore. I want my thirst to be satisfied. And Jesus' response to her makes it clear that, that he doesn't just come to satisfy our thirst. Jesus actually comes to take our thirst away so that he could quench our thirst forever. And he says, go call your husband. And in that, the very thing that the woman desired for her sin to stay covered up so that people wouldn't talk about it in a place that she could hear it, well, Jesus exposes that sin. She says, I have no husband. And he says, you're right in saying you have no husband. You've had five, and the one you're now with is not your husband. And at that moment, you can almost feel as the woman's, as the woman's eyes drop and look away because her sin has been exposed. The thing that she has thirsted for, she didn't get. But then Jesus continues to draw her deeper into this conversation. And he calls her attention back to himself. Believe me. He talks about worshiping in spirit and truth and then reveals the big truth that Jesus is the Christ. You see, Jesus didn't come just to, just to meet the thirst that she came with. But he came to this well to draw her into faith in him. And when he does that, this is the beautiful thing about this entire story. Where does the water jar end up at the end of the story? Did you guys see where the water jar was at the end of the video? It stayed at the well. Because all of the things that the woman was thirsting for, all of the things that she desired, she leaves them at the well when she finally meets the Christ, the one who is coming to take her thirst away. And she runs into the village. This spring of living water is already inside of her, overflowing. She runs into the village. She uncovers her sin, tells everybody about it because that doesn't matter anymore. What matters is that she has met the Christ. See, Jesus 
comes to meet us in our baptism to take our thirst away. That's what the whole gospel is really about. Jesus stands in the place of sinful human beings. Human beings who were driven by the, by the thirst, the fear of our reputation being tarnished. Human beings who were driven by, by the love of things other than God. Human beings who are driven by a thirst that drives us in so many directions. Jesus took the guilt of that on himself and he goes to the cross and on the cross, Jesus says, I thirst. I thirst, a human thirst. But Jesus, in his perfect obedience to God, puts that thirst aside and gives up his life so that he could quench our thirst for relationship with him forever. Because everything in our life, everything that we might thirst after, all of the things of this world, your thirst will never be satisfied. But when we meet Jesus, when we meet Jesus, he takes those thirsts, sets them aside. In the very water of our baptism, he, he unites us with his death and resurrection. He sets the things that we had thirsted for aside, and he gives us a relationship with him. That's the thing we were created for, is to know him more and more. And that thirst, that thirst is the thirst that Jesus will always quench. Because even though everything in this world is not enough, Jesus is enough. Jesus takes our thirst on himself and quenches our thirst because Jesus is enough. And not the kind of enough like, I just missed lunch, and I'm going through the McDonald's drive through to hold me over to dinner. But the kind of enough, like when you go over to a friend's house, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience, they pull the food out of the oven, and you just kind of look around the room like, there's eight of us here. How are we going to eat all of that? And then you end up going home with this stack of Tupperware that's so big that you have to share, you have to have your neighbors over just to eat all of the leftovers. That's the kind of enough that Jesus gives as he pours out his blood on the cross, as he, as he thirsts as a human being to quench our thirst forever, it's the kind of enough that's a spring of living water that wells up so that we have to share it. Because Jesus' gifts that he gives here are so much better than we could have ever imagined. Jesus is enough for us. He's enough for our neighbors. Jesus, who gives us living water, is more than enough.